at least one culprit of the infamous I Buy Power match fixing scandal has been unbanned. I truly thought I would never get to say those words. Okay, so before we get into it, friendly reminder to all of the Counter-Strike fans out there that we, the Score Esports, have a Face It Clan. Play with me, your friends, and the rest of our community, collect Face It points, and buy cool things like skins in the shop. It's totally free to join, just click the link in the description below. So yeah, Steel. One of the most respected and long-standing IGLs in the history of North American Counter-Strike will be able to compete in Valve sanctioned events as of 2025. We know this because he tweeted it. On the 10 year anniversary of the extremely notorious match fixing scandal of which he and his teammates were a part, Steel's ban will be no more. Now, if you know Steel from Valorant, there's a fairly real chance that you don't know the story behind any of this. Back in 2014, Steel played for a scrappy North American CSGO roster called iBuyPower. In a SIVO match against Netcode Guides, they threw, intentionally, for some skins. He's gonna have two right there. Can they line up for him? What is he doing? Why did he hesitate so much? Doesn't matter, has the CZ, gets one, gets taken down. Now, it sounds simple, and in a sense, it is but it went on to become one of the biggest scandals in the history of esports. We made an entire video detailing the origins, severity, and longevity of the scandal, which you should check out if you want to learn more. But it suffices to say that it might actually be Global Offensive's greatest controversy. You see, after the match fixing came to light, Valve, the makers of Counter-Strike, published a blog post where they issued indefinite bans to each and every member of the I by Power roster, save Scoot Doodle, who apparently chose not to share in the spoils. The careers of Brax, Dazed, AZK, and Steel were all but ended. Not only did Valve bring down the ban hammer, but they made it fairly clear over time that they had no intention of lifting it. The years went by, and even as tournament organizers began lifting these guys' bans to non-major events, they were never really able to ascend past tier two and three rosters. How could they, if every time a major came along, they'd have to bow out. But Steel in particular worked really hard to make amends. Instead of sulking or simply staying quiet, he created content that would help casual players. He continued competing in lower tiers and even shot the occasional PSA. Match fixing damages the competitive integrity of the game and can be fatal to the ecosystem. And if you get caught, you can face severe consequences. But you could be permanently banned from majors. That means you have to work shitty tier three events as a caster. Is match fixing wrong? Yes. Is it cheating? Yes. Should it be punished severely? Yes. But let's be reasonable. The reality is that these guys made like a thousand dollars each off of their pull and faced an ostensibly permanent ban for a crime that has plagued esports since the days of Brood War and whose culprits to this day mostly go unpunished. I'm not making excuses. I'm simply saying that if Forsaken can eat a five year ban for using actual aim hacks on LAN, then surely we can let a guy who has spent a literal decade trying to make amends for illicitly copying a sick knife or whatever off a CSGO lounge learn from his mistakes. And that's exactly what Valve did. Last week, Steel tweeted out of nowhere that come January 2025, Valve would be lifting his ban. To say that a significant portion of the community collectively rejoiced would be an understatement. What's really interesting though, is that he didn't say anything about the other members of the iBuy Power Squad. Whether that's because he doesn't know, didn't feel that it was his news to share, or because he's the only one who got unbanned, remains to be seen. A lot of people are wondering whether this means Brax could come back, but as of right now, we simply don't know. He has, understandably, been putting his all into Valorant over the past couple of years, and while I don't think that that should be the determining factor, it could be that Valve simply think that he and the other guys haven't earned it. The reality is that any such lifts are long overdue, and it's not even really apparent that the players can do anything with them anymore. I'm not being critical or harsh, I just, 2015 was a very long time ago. The game has changed a lot since then, as have the players still. In the case of Steel, the lift is deserved, even if it's just for posterity's sake. The good that Steel has done for Counter-Strike has long outweighed the bad, and it would have been kind of disrespectful to the Counter-Strike scene at large for Valve to have continued ignoring that. Plus, 
Who knows? Maybe he'll re-inject some real life back into NACS. Maybe he won't. But he's one of the figureheads of the scene and we need all of the help we can get. Either way, it was the right call. Legacy is important and Steele deserved for his reputation to be redeemed. This was one of the dumbest, darkest mishaps in the history of Global Offensive. It would be very cool and very cathartic, I think, for all of their stories to come full circle. Hopefully they do. Valve just arbitrarily one time decided to issue permanent bans to one single roster for one crime. Now they have done it since, like other people who match fix for larger amounts of money. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, these guys did 10 years, Danny. 10 years, dude. 